Hello, everyone out there tuning in. Thank you for being here again today. My name is Ashley Bickle. I work in the recruitment department at Loyalist College. Today's info session is all about the personal support worker program. And I am so happy to have here with me today, Julie Rivers, who is a professor in the personal support worker program. And she's also the program coordinator. So she's here to share with us today all about the personal support worker program at Loyalist. Julie, can you start by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about your professional background? My name's Julie Rivers, and I've been, a, been a, in nursing for almost 40 years now. I started out actually in a nursing home in high school as a what we call healthcare aide, which is personal support worker now, and started out with that, fell in love with geriatrics, and uh, have had a wonderful career, career since then. Um, it's interesting, I, I went to university for my nursing, and when I came back, I went to that same nursing home that I started at as a PSW and I was a director of care. So, so it was a really unique experience. But I have had experience in long-term care, in retirement home and nursing home, in community care. I was a, a community care coordinator and I've worked with research with the Southeastern Regional Geriatric Program in, in the past and in public health. So I've had a very varied career but often tending towards uh, care of seniors. And I've been at the college here now for almost 17 years. Started out working in the simulation lab and helped develop the human simulation lab in 2015. Then I went back to school, got my master's in education, and now I'm teaching in the personal support worker program. Very cool. So yes, so lots of that amazing industry related background that you have, that is absolutely fantastic. Can you start by telling us a little bit about the Personal Support Worker Program? Sure. The, the Personal Support Worker Program is a one-year certificate program here at Loyalist. We've been offering it for um, uh, many years, about 2001, we've been offering the program here. Recently, we've been offering it twice a year. We used to just offer it once a year, compressed in January, a compressed format, and we found that was difficult for students. Um, coming into college for a one-year program. So now we're offering it traditional, so two semesters. Uh, the program is um, mostly theory in the first semester, so learning about what the role of the personal support worker is, um, what types of work you will do, where you will work, um, what are some common illnesses or challenges people face that you'll be supporting them with. What are the types of support that you'll do to keep them safe and comfortable? Um, what about mental health supports? Those types of things as well. Um, and we have lab in the first semester where the students will practice uh, all of the skills that they would need to do uh, in supporting individuals in facilities or the community. Our second semester is mostly practicum. So they're out in the workforce. The first um, practicum we have is with uh, one of the faculty present um, in a long-term care facility. The uh, second and third practicum, one is in the community, visiting people in their homes or in a retirement home. And the last one is back into a long-term care facility or in uh, the hospital. We've been able to procure placements for PSWs in the hospital in the last uh, year or so. So very exciting. That is uh, pretty neat how they're in the hospitals now. Um, can you yeah. tell us a little bit about how students learn within this fantastic program? Most of the students we find come to the program say that they're hands-on learners and that's been year after year. So, so we really listen to our learners and try to develop the learning strategies to their way of learning. Um, as an example, in my very first class, I'll ask people to think about something that they found challenging to learn and how they learned it best. And we incorporate those strategies uh, into, into the learning environment. So there will be some classes, some theory classes that they'll learn. We have guest speakers come in, for example, from palliative care. Uh, we have employers come in to the role of the PSW course as well um, to, to have a panel with the students. Um, we learn in the lab, so we have the human simulation lab, which is really exciting here at Loyalist and has been um, a nation leader in simulation through time. And so some of the things they'll do with each other, some they'll do with some mannequins, and we even have some what we call high fidelity or very realistic simulations. Um, towards the end of the program, like for example, somebody having chest pain and what would you do? So they live that experience here 
And then when they go out to work in clinical or to, to start their career, they've already had that experience. So they have that to draw on. It's not their first time being, being with that. We actually do a simulation with the paramedic students as well, where they come in. So they learn to deal with different disciplines and different healthcare workers as part of a team. So they'll, they'll learn in class, they'll learn in, in the lab, and then also in clinical placements. And we have some excellent partners for our clinical placements that we've had long standing. And uh, in, those, in those environments, they learn uh, with real people. It's like apprenticing almost. Yeah, so that's different ways that they can learn. Very cool. Yes. So lots of great hands-on experience and that simulation lab is a pretty incredible place to work. And, and, and as you mentioned, very realistic with some, with what some of those mannequins can do. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that experiential learning that they get to, uh, that they get to do and more about that hands-on opportunities? So in the first semester, mostly it's lab learning skills and, and actually they have some testing on that to make sure that they do things safely and competently. Then when they've got all that, basic background information, as well as combining that with their theory. We have a course called Integrative Theory in second semester, and that's when we use the simulation lab to its potential. Uh, so they'll have simulations that we'll, we'll set up and mock up that there's a person they're caring for in a nursing home and they have to introduce them. We'll mock up one where we're in a person's home and there's a dog there and they have to follow policy around so, you know, around animals and how to communicate with the, with the patient. Um, sometimes we have patient actors. Sometimes the students take on the roles of the patients and act that. Um, and sometimes we use the, the mannequins. So there are those simulations. There's one where there's a fall. There's one where there's a person potentially suffering from elder abuse. So we give them a variety of situations and present that to them in as real and authentic a way that we can and have them react to that. Then we debrief about that. What went really well? What were you uncomfortable with? And, and would you do it the same or would you do it differently? So it's not so much about testing. The students are a little anxious when they go in and that's, that's normal. Um, but it's all about learning and developing as a person and as a PSW professional. Very cool. So can you tell us a little bit, you mentioned earlier uh, the practicums that students get to uh, get to be a part of. Can you tell us a little bit more about those uh, and those opportunities that they get to experience within the program? Sure. The, the first practicum is uh, six weeks long and it's two days a week in a long-term care facility and the, the faculty member is present with them. So they've always got somebody to go to that they know and that that knows what they've been taught and can help them. But also um, with our partners, the PSWs that work in those facilities are familiar with our students coming and with what they've been taught and how they are to, to carry out their duties and communicate and, and do safe lifting and so forth. So between the faculty and the staff that are familiar with us, um, they get that opportunity to really work as a PSW and start developing their skills. So the faculty is there to observe and to coach and mentor, as well as some of the staff members do help with that as well. Uh, so that gives people sort of to minimal guidance is, is how we term it, that they can do all these things and they can be safe in assisting someone to eat or to move or to, to have some personal hygiene or bath. Then um, when they go, when they're finished that placement, they're at least at minimal guidance. Most of our students are above that, but that's our, that's our passing level. In practicum two, that's in the community. So they'll actually go out and this is with a preceptor. So there's a faculty available to advise, but it's like they're going out on a work placement. It's like they're on an orientation to their new workplace. So that's for four weeks and they work with a full-time PSW and they start and that PSW will, will take them into to the home and introduce them to the client, uh, go over the care plan, what is to be done for the client, and then let them engage with the client. The first week, um, the PSWs in the community usually have them assist and introduce them to the client, get them comfortable. The second week, they start taking over the duty. And by the end of the four weeks, they're doing all of the PSW work in the home and the PSW mentor standing back 
and maybe doing some other things with the client that they don't normally get a chance to do and observing the student do this. So, so it is a gradual um, progression from getting to know the person to completely taking over. Uh, and then in practicum three, it's either in a long-term care facility or the hospital with the same model. They're with a mentor, a PSW, who's graduated from our program or another program. And again, they're going to start introducing them to the job and then gradually make them take over. So by the end of the program, our students are very comfortable because they have got to that level of being independent in their role and doing it in a variety of places. Wow, so some really amazing opportunities, you know, to get within those different roles and get that amazing experience. Um, so another question I have for you here, I know just being a, a member of the Loyalist community, we have some pretty successful grads, which is really exciting. Can you highlight some of those grads that have come from the personal support worker program? What we're really happy about is a lot of times our graduating students are our mentors for practicum two and three. So, uh, so it's a, a full circle. So some of our students traditionally, personal support workers are known to work in nursing homes, retirement homes, and visiting people in their home for community care or the LIN. Um, but some new, some new types of opportunities are students because of the skill set they develop with the personal support worker program and that's increased in the last three or four years, what they're able to do is to work in different settings. So we have students that are working in the traditional roles and loving it, but we also have students that are working in the school setting, supporting people who have challenges or illnesses or developmental challenges in, in a school setting. We have some of our graduates who are working in um, doctor's office or clinics. Uh, because they do learn to take vital signs. They do learn to do therapeutic communication and interviewing of regarding health. So those skills then transcend from their traditional to, to a new type of environment. The hospital has been using PSWs for about the past eight to 10 years. Don't quote me on that, but around that amount of time. And so our personal support workers, we've been able to three years ago secure placements at the hospital for them. And uh, they're getting jobs there now as well. Uh, so some other areas they can get continuing education after they graduate is in palliative care, in care of people with dementia or responsive behaviors. Um, and there's new, in the, in the larger cities, they can actually do perinatal or caring for moms and new babes. Wow, so some pretty uh, amazing careers that come out of this uh, program and some grads that have done some pretty incredible things as well. So always very proud of that. So I want to thank you, Julie, for being here with us today and sharing with us that amazing information about that uh, personal support worker program that we have at Loyalist College. And to everyone tuning in, I hope you uh, gathered some great information from Julie and, uh, and we hope to see you again soon. Keep well. Thanks, guys. We'll see you.